Hello, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Eric Hermann. I am uh, doing a short video tutorial. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it short for this template that I've created uh, for Ableton called Rapid Flow. And uh, yeah, before we start, let me give you a quick uh, idea of uh, what uh, the template can do and uh, what it sounds like. Um, so um, I'm just going to run into the second track on this set switch off the speakers and putting on a headphone would probably be a good idea. All right, so let's have a play with this. that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, what you can do with this template. Um, so yeah, let me uh, give you first maybe a little bit of input why I, I made this and um, yeah, a little bit of background maybe also on, on myself. I'll keep it very short. Um, so yeah, I've been making music and uh, I actually studied sound engineering something like I think it was 25 years ago or something in, in, in Amsterdam. And since then I worked for a pretty long time as a, as a sound engineer and a musician. Um, these days I'm no longer a professional musician, uh, I do IT consulting, but I still love music and I love being in the studio. Um, and what I found is that um, I would spend a long time working on tracks in a very linear way, making a sequence, you know, drawing out the blocks and doing all the things. And it just, it, it became a chore at a certain point. And I'm decently disciplined, so I would get through it, but it really wouldn't be that much more fun. Um, and also the results were then maybe technically quite okay, I guess, but just it, it didn't really catch me anymore that much. And um, I've come across a lot of people that make music, some as a hobby, uh, some full time. And it just, yeah, it seems to be a very long, painstaking process for many of us. And through um, collaborating with uh, people and doing master classes uh, with amazing musicians such as uh, Frank Miedemann or Sebastian Müllert, I started to realize that um, a lot of the advice they give in their master classes is about how to keep the creativity and the positive flow in your music. And of course, also some, some sort of technical tips and ideas, uh, how you can make sure that uh, you hold the space for being creative without being too distracted from all the technical things. Um, so what uh, they do and what many people I've seen uh, using live to play um, gigs and to work in the studio do is stick to a very simple template, which is in essence what I've also built here. Um, where you have uh, eight tracks and in those eight tracks everything has to happen that can make up a track um, for uh, live playing. I know it sounds daunting at first initially I was also like whoa okay how is this going to work but it is doable and the beauty of doing it in this way is that you can then control your whole set uh, through one simple controller. It can be the Akai APC40 MK2 which is quite nice uh, but you could also do it with something simple like the Akai MIDI mix. Um, so let me show you a little bit what's happening in these tracks, a little bit of sound, a little bit of music. We have a few options uh, for kick drums. So yeah, those are all just samples that I've sort of pre-mixed to a certain level, to a certain peak intensity so that they will work in the track. And there's also a few other samples in there. So you'll see there's some hi-hat samples in there and there's also some claps and snares and rim shots to get you started um, and to have a good foundation for where you know the drums, if you mix them in at this level, um, they'll be all right, they'll, they'll sound good.
And there's a nice little element here that the decays of the hi-hats are mapped to controller 8. So when you set this template up, uh, please use the MIDI map functionality and map your controller 8 to the hi-hat decay. And that will allow you to uh, adjust the groove of your hi-hats or also do kind of little build-ups while you're playing uh, just by rotating this. So to give, you, to give you a bit of an idea what that does, it's really nice to be able to adjust the groove of the hi-hats while you're playing live or while you're making a track to get it to sit just right. The second track is uh, basses. And I think many of you will hear that already has delays and uh, some reverb, I think, even in it. There's no sense happening on these tracks, and actually none of these tracks have any real effect processing. I know there's some plugins here, we're going to get into that. But all that reverb and delay is mixed into the file, so it's recorded that way. Uh, the third track is for groove elements, so I tend to put toms there. Again, you can hear there's a lot of stuff there. And the fourth track is for percussion type sounds. The fifth track is for um, melodies and atmospheric stuff. Let me jump to a different track so I can show you what that track sounds like. And the sixth track is uh, reserved for pads. other sort of melodic harmonic content. Um, the seventh track is where you would typically put your uh, hook uh, or your uh, vocal maybe uh, inside. And that's it. The um, final track would be reserved for atmospheric sort of effects, risers, fallers, things like that. I, I didn't actually put anything like that in. I ran out of time a little bit making this template. It's, yeah, it's, it, it was a lot more work than I realized. Actually figuring out how OBX, this video OBS video streaming software works. My God, that took longer than making the template. Anyway, so please, you know, just drop some sort of whooshes and washes in there and, and some background noises if you want to add some atmospherics to your tracks. Um, yes, um, so let's have a little bit more in-depth look at what's in these tracks. Um, let's have a look, for example, at the kick drum. We have a, a drum rack. There is an EQ in every track that is there for live fixes. So if you're playing somewhere and the PA is set up weirdly or you've, you know, misunderestimated the way that um, your subs are set up, you can use this to quickly fix that problem. This was a fantastic tip uh, from Frank Wiedemann, actually. He picked it up from someone, but he... Again, but he spoke about it in his masterclass and it just really makes sense. So this is the only time when I would say, yeah, okay, if you need to fix something quickly live, this is a good place to do it. Um, the other thing that uh, is here is a sub or infra bass cleaning um, uh, track, which basically gets rid of very low basses on tracks that have bass instruments because you don't really need them. They're just going to clog up the PA. Then there is a subs low cut, both on the kick and on the bass. So what this does is it gives you a possibility to um, yeah, do some uh, nice low cutting to build up some tension. Uh, 
Um, so that's routed um, uh, here, and this is something that you will need to do. This was a great tip also from uh, Mr. Wiedemann, that it makes no sense having a master fader on stage. You can only do bad things with it. Either you'll put it up and things will clip, or things will be low in volume and you may not know why at 4 or 5 in the morning. So what you please need to do is assign your master fader, again using the media sign function, to here. Just click it, move it around, and the same is true for the bass. You'll see a similar EQ like that, again with a, a macro, just assign the master fader to that. And so now when you move the master fader, you'll cut lows from 